Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you for joining me for uh, this presentation. Uh, the topic of the presentation will be the next generation of mobile testing. As you know, testing is an important part in uh, the DevOps process, so we're going to focus on that today. Uh, I'm, I will start with presenting myself. I'm a senior product manager uh, with digital AI. I have a background in uh, psychology, business, and law. And uh, my love is, in life is to travel. I've been in more than uh, 50 countries and still counting. And uh, I'm leading the test creation products uh, within the G digital AI. And uh, I think the test creation products, uh, like any other product, has a psychological part to it. We need to understand the thinking model of the user to anticipate what the user will do and eventually provide the user a clear path to do what he needs to do. Uh, eventually, we want to build products that are simple, intuitive, and deliver what they promised. So, regarding the agenda for today, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk uh, about uh, the continuous testing platform. I'm going to show you how uh, this uh, platform looks like. I will show you a really effective tool where you can uh, build tests directly from the cloud uh, and run them on uh, a real device. Later, I will touch just a bit about the evolution of uh, software testing, and uh, later I will uh, demonstrate uh, our, uh, our autonomous testing tool um, that uses uh, machine learning and AI on a real uh, application. Uh, okay, so let's start. Okay, so our continuous testing uh, platform is a platform that focus on, uh, for uh, mobile tester, automation tester, QA engineers, uh, performance engineers, and many more. We basically provide them a platform where they can use real devices. Uh, we have data, sense, uh, data center around the world where our customers are able to basically connect uh, to the uh, cloud and eventually uh, use a real device. Uh, not just that, we also provide them uh, uh, desktop solutions and also emulators and simulators. And let's see how it looks like. So this is a cloud, it's a demo cloud, but uh, basically every one of our uh, customer has his own cloud with the devices that he asked for. So this is the devices we have in this cloud. Um, I will open a device and so we can play with it uh, later. Uh, okay, and here you can also see different uh, browsers, uh, also on different operation systems, and also emulators and simulators. And this is basically what we provide uh, on our platform. So right now I'm opening a live device. I want to show you how uh, it looks like. Let's wait just a bit. Okay, so this is this is basically called uh, the mobile studio. It's a place uh, I didn't want this device, but anyway, let's uh, let's work with this. Uh, so this is a real device. Uh, you can see I can play with with it like any other device. Uh, we have the control panel here. And we have also other tools here, uh, like simulate capture, network tunneling, authentication, and many, many more uh, tools. Uh, I, will, I will touch it uh, later, and I will show you uh, how we can uh, work with this. And I think I will open a different device. Uh, so we can work with it later. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, right now I want to talk with you about some continuous testing challenges organizations face these days. So uh, organizations want to keep high quality of uh, test coverage. They have a lot of changes and a lot of versions they need to test. And a lot of the times the lack of the resources to do it, the lack of the people to do it. And even if they have those people to test, uh, 
a lot of them don't have enough technical knowledge. And that leads to high pressure in the organization, high pressure for fast delivery, and basically a huge bottleneck in the, the organization, and of course, for all the DevOps process. So in order to face these uh, challenges, we, we developed the test editor. So what is the test editor? The test editor is a tool that allows users to run and validate small chunks of code before adding them to their ID. It's a really interesting tool, and I want to show you how it works. Okay, so let's go back to our platform, and let's see how it works. OK. OK, so this is a, a platform. Uh, Again, I open a real device, and right now I will open an application, and uh, I will fetch uh, all the elements on the, on the screen for this specific uh, application or this specific page. So I will click on Fetch Dump, and we are able to see here uh, the elements that uh, were fetched. And uh, right now, I will, build, uh, I will show you how we built a small uh, test, a test that we can uh, basically log into the application. So I choose, uh, I, will, I will open first the test editor. OK, this is, this is basically the test editor. This is the tool. We can also use it uh, on a floating mode. I like to use it on a docking mode. OK, and right now, uh, let's start building the test. So the first thing uh, we need in order to build the test is to choose the first element, the username element. And uh, there are several ways to build a test. I will show you the, the way I like to do it. So I copy a unique XPath. And I'm able to see the XPath here, uh, the XPath of the, the element. And uh, I, need, I add this, uh, I add a step based on this XPath, or I can add a click type of step, send keys, and find element type of step. This type of step is send keys, uh, since I need to enter information inside. So you are able to see that uh, the steps entered into the test editor, added to the test editor. I can see the action here. It's located by an XPath. I can see the XPath here. And right now, I will enter uh, my username, company, my username. So this is the first step uh, in, uh, for the test. The second one is the password. I'm choosing this uh, element, and I'm copying here a unique XPath. We are able to see the XPath here. And I add a step, and this type of step is also send keys type of step. And I see that it's being added here. Uh, we can see it's the same, basically, action located by XPath. The XPath is here, and here I add the username that it's company. Uh, now for the last step, I will choose the login element. I click on it. Uh, again, I copy a unique XPath, and I can see it here. And I add a step, and this type of step is click. We don't need to enter any information. It's like just uh, clicking on the button. So I I add it to the test editor. And right now we can see the flow, the flow of the test. You, you saw that we didn't use any code, and uh, it was really, really easy to do, uh, really simple to do. So right now uh, I will run the test on a real device. You will see it here. So I click on Run, and let's open the console so you can uh, see what happens behind the scenes. So uh, let's move it a bit. And you are able to see that uh, the test is running. The first step is being executed. You can also see it on the reflection of the device here. The second step is being executed. And the third one. And the test is passed. You can also see it in, here in the console that the test is passed. And this is basically how testers all developers can build really fast uh, tests using the test editor. Um, and the next thing you, you, you will be able to see is 
the export code uh, option. So I click on export code after uh, I finish with the test, and I have the code of the test here. I can choose the language I want to export the code to. I choose it, I copy it, and eventually I just need to pass it in uh, my IDE. And I, I'm able to change the code however I want and eventually integrate it to uh, my CI environment. So let's go back and talk about the benefits of this uh, product. So you saw this, using this tool is really, really easy. It's really, really simple to uh, create tests. It takes a few minutes. Of course, it depends on the length of the test, but it takes really uh, uh, not, not a lot of time in order to create tests. And uh, it's really simple. You just add step by step. You don't need any coding skills. So also non-coders are able to, to do it. Uh, not just that, they are able to do it, but they are also able to contribute to the uh, development uh, process since they can export the code and share it with another automation uh, developer. And like that, they can contribute to all the development process. And we also have the option for developers. So if uh, developers uh, just want to uh, choose chunk of code and to validate it on a real device, they can build it in the test editor and do it. They don't uh, need to run all their tests from the beginning until the end, something that takes a lot of time. Uh, so this is really contribute to, uh, to uh, the DevOps uh, process and shorten uh, the time eventually. Okay. Um, so what are we planning next? So you saw that uh, there are not a lot of steps. Uh, we just have uh, find, find element, click, and the uh, keys. But we want to also um, cope with more complex test scenario. And for that, we need more commands. We are, we are now working on a lot of different commands in order to copy it. For, ex uh, for example, a command that uh, scroll and eventually find an element, and really different commands in order to uh, enable users to create tests uh, really fast. Uh, the next thing we want to, uh, to do, and we do, is to uh, provide different languages uh, our users are able to export the code to. And the last thing that is really, really interesting, we want to enable our customers to save those tests for later usage. So not just saving those tests, but also to schedule those tests, also to get data about those tests, and uh, much more. And for that, we will build the test management uh, platform. Uh, we are currently in the, in the beta stage with that. Um, and this is uh, what we are planning to do. OK, now I want to talk with you a little bit, just a bit, about the software testing evolution. Firstly, humans started with uh, manual testing, okay? They play with applications, and they saw uh, if the outcomes are expected or not expected. It was a really slow process. It, it still is, because uh, people are still doing it. And uh, all the methodology uh, back then that the human worked with were, uh, was the waterfall methodology. So releases weren't frequent, they were every couple of weeks or every couple of months. And uh, when the second uh, or the first, this is the first, the first uh, uh, wave of evolution for testing came, uh, testers started to write uh, automation tests. So they can run automatically. They usually did it at uh, night time. And uh, this process was much, much, much faster. But still, tests were fragile and still really long. And then we, we moved to an, a different phase. Uh, the next uh, evolution was much more impactful. I'm talking about the continuous testing evolution. So from focusing on uh, automation of tests, we shifted to being focused on triggering of tests and also deployment of tests. So after um, a build was uh, created, 
just after that, a test was uh, testing uh, this build. Also, when um, a code was changed, after that, a build was uh, created uh, directly. So, um, and also regarding testing, uh, instead of really long tests, we were shifted to being more focused on a specific behavior and uh, much shorter tests. And eventually, the agile methodology uh, came and changed and like moved the waterfall methodology. And instead of uh, releasing every few weeks or every few months, we started to release every day or even a couple of times a day. A day. And now uh, we are arriving to a new era, an era where um, tests can be created automatically. Not just that, an era where humans are much less involved in all the process using machine learning and using AI. Right now, I want to present you autonomous testing, our test creation tool. Autonomous testing uh, will end the user application and auto-generate sanity tests without uh, any need for coding skills. So I want to uh, show you how this uh, platform looks like, how our autonomous testing uh, solution looks like. Um, okay. So this is the platform. Uh, I just want to, a disclaimer, it's a, it's a demo platform. At the moment, we uh, onboard customers one by one to this uh, platform. And let's see how it works. So uh, first thing I need to do is to uh, provide a name for, the, for a workspace that I will work on. DevOps, let's uh, give it uh, this unique name. Click Next. And currently, we are supporting only Android application. You can uh, use uh, existing application on your cloud, also upload the uh, different application. And we will uh, support iOS soon. Uh, you can see it's coming soon. And uh, let's choose, um, let's choose the, uh, no, 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 the KLM application. OK, KLM, airline uh, company. Uh, I will uh, start with uh, using that, click on create, and I created the, the workspace. So the first thing I want to do after uploading an application, I want to scan my application. So eventually, I will get the different screens of the application, the connections between them, and eventually all the flow of the application. So I click on uh, start the exploration, so you can see here that I can give a name for the exploration. I can uh, choose different application versions. Uh, since I can upload different versions of the application, I have a device count. So if I want to um, do the exp uh, exploration faster, I would need to choose more devices. I can choose a specific uh, device here. And uh, regarding parameters, um, let's say, we have an application with a credential in the beginning, and we don't want to be stuck where uh, we need to enter the credential. We just uh, put it here in the uh, parameters. OK, since this will take, uh, it will take a few minutes, uh, I prepared in advance, and I want to show you how this uh, graph of the application looks like after I finish with scanning the application. So this is basically the exploration. And right now, click on this. And I'm able to see the graph of the application, so the different windows or activities of the application and the connections uh, between them. So this is basically the, the graph. Um, let's go back. OK. The second thing I want to be focused on or to show you in this uh, platform, it's uh, the gate area. So as I mentioned before, we have a scenario where we need to enter credential. We need to enter, I don't know, if we talk about uh, KLM, we can, uh, it can be a flight number, it can be destination, it can be a departure, or it can be any other thing. And uh, in order for our platform 
to scan and continue with scanning all the different pages of the application, we need to enter this information, and we do it here. So every time the system gets to a page like this or activity like this that needs information, uh, we need to insert the information here, and I will show you how it works. Um, so for example here, uh, I clicked on, on this uh, gate, and uh, you are able to see that uh, it's, you need to enter the uh, booking, booking code or a tick number and the last name. And we have uh, two options to insert the, this information. So I can uh, use uh, XPath in order to uh, enter the information, or we can use the form. We have this really cool feature that you just uh, click on suggest, and here uh, you can see a booking code or a ticket number. You enter the information here. You can also enter the last name here. You save, and eventually you open this gate, and the exploration continues. So it means that it will continue to scan uh, the pages that comes after this uh, page. And this is how you will get eventually a broader graph with all the different pages of the application. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, you probably thought about, OK, what, what if I will enter different information? What if I want to enter or get different flows since uh, we enter different information? We are working on this, and this will be in the next version. Uh, OK, so after, uh, after opening the gate, I go back to exploration, and I have this uh, generate test button. Uh, I just click on this. <laughs> I did it uh, before, of course. Uh, but this button eventually, after a few seconds, you get all the different tests based on the, on the graph, and this takes really not more than a few seconds, not more than 10 seconds, okay? So you will be able to see all the, the, uh, the different tests uh, here. You can see it here. And let's, let's choose a specific test. Uh, you can yeah, delete, duplicate this test, also run it on a real device, if you execute it and run it on a real device. And we can also edit uh, this uh, test. And here, you can see the flow of uh, the test. So I'm uh, being navigated to this uh, specific page of activity, click on this specific element, and verify this test by this specific uh, activity. We can also add different steps here and uh, eventually um, edit our test however, however uh, we want. And this is uh, basically our platform. This is our autonomous uh, testing platform. Um, OK, let's go back to the presentation and talk a little bit about the benefits. So you saw that uh, using this tool, it's really, really easy. You, also, you don't need to be a developer in order to use it. You just click on a couple of uh, buttons in order to generate a scanning of your application, a model of your application, in order to generate tests uh, based on this uh, model. So it's this, uh, it gives you this uh, kind of flexibility. Uh, also, tests are being done uh, automatically, OK? And automatically and really, really fast. And eventually, it will in increase the time to market. And since you can create tests based on the, the model, and run them on a real device really fast, you can check for bugs like that and uh, release uh, with confidence. So this is what we currently have with the test editor. But what are we planning next? So we are planning um, for our customers or for any other user uh, to identify performance and functional an anomalies in early stages. And what do I mean by that? Uh, if, for example, we upload the same application or different versions of the same application, we will be able to see uh, if uh, there were changes regarding performance. So if uh, one application uh, for a specific action uh, influenced any device vital, like uh, CPU, like, uh, you, uh, like um, memory, 
or any other device vital in comparison to another version. Also, uh, if we talk about functional uh, testing, uh, we will be able to see the different pages or the different functionalities with, between applications. Uh, and not just that, we also planning to provide a UX score. So for any page, uh, the user will get a metric for different things like um, speed index. So how much time it takes for a contact to be uploaded on a specific page. Or for example, how much time it takes for a user uh, to interact when, with a specific page. So this is uh, what we plan uh, next. Um, regarding uh, UI coverage, since we have the ability to fetch all the different elements on a page, we can compare it with uh, the user tests and eventually provide our customers uh, user, uh, UI coverage. And the last thing we are planning to do is to integrate this autonomous testing tool, tool together with the test editor. So autonomous testing will scan the application, generate a model out of the application, generate tests based on the model, and with the test editor, a user will be able to edit those tests and save those tests on the test management platform. So eventually, uh, we will get um, a process that is really fast and enable customer really fast releases. Um, so we shorten all the testing time. So what we talked about uh, in this lecture, I showed you uh, our continuous testing platform. You saw how uh, we can interact with uh, different uh, devices. Uh, you saw uh, also that uh, we support browsers, emulators, simulators. You saw a test editor tool, a tool that enables you to create tests directly from your cloud, edit, edit those tests, and eventually export the code to your ID of choice. Next, we talked just a little bit about the evolution of uh, software testing. And right now, I just presented you our uh, autonomous testing uh, tool. Thank you very much.